Tell me what you're here about. Well, um, my name is Josh Harper. I'm one of the Stop Huntington Animal Cruelty 7. Um, we're six activists plus one activist group, um, Stop Huntington Animal Cruelty, who are indicted under federal terrorism laws. Um, the interesting thing is, though, uh, we didn't break anything, we didn't burn anything, we didn't beat anyone, uh, we didn't even so much as trespass. Our crime is doing exactly what I'm doing right now, speaking. Um, everything in this case, every charge, every count in the indictment relates to things that we wrote, things that we said, and things that we posted on the internet. Um, so right now, I'm facing five years in federal prison for talking, and three of my co-defendants are facing as much as 23 years in prison for running a website. I don't know if any of you here tonight um, have heart problems or are easily scared, but I'm actually going to recreate the act of terrorism that I am facing three years in prison for right now. <laughs> Actually, what happened was I was standing um, in, in a, a classroom at the University of Washington where somebody had booked a speaking engagement. Uh, later, I found out that the person who booked it was actually an FBI agent. And 11 people were in, in attendance, and so obviously I was going to be able to influence a mass of terrorists in that 11 person crowd. And what I talked about was a tactic that's been used by the animal rights movement. It's a, a tactic of electronic civil disobedience, where you take three sheets of paper and get ready, because this is a terrorism right here. You take three sheets of black paper, and you tape them end to end to end. And one end of those goes into a fax machine. And you dial the number of, say, any corporate exploiter um, that you might have in mind or, um, or a financial institution that's supporting you know, animal cruelty. You dial the facts, and once it begins going through, you take the back end and you tape it to the front end so it runs in a continuous loop. Look out, Osama bin Laden and Josh Harper, so you're just coming to your toner and paper. As comedic as it all sounds, however, the fact of the matter is, is that me and my friends are facing years and years in federal prison for doing nothing more than speaking about tactics like this. Does it make you afraid to speak? I mean, facing this prison time, or is it going to stop you know you from saying anything? You know, um, I'm a big loud mouth. <laughs> uh, it's what I'm known for, and. Um, the one thing that this indictment has done, though, is it's, it's made me question somewhat the value of speech. I mean, quite frankly, if you can spend three to five years in prison for talking, you might as well be out smashing windows. You might as well be out committing acts of sabotage. I think if we're indicted, and especially if some of my co-defendants get the sentence that the, um, that the prosecutors are looking for, I think it's going to send a message to people everywhere that, fuck it, you know? Why, why bother going out on speaking tours if you're going to do jail time? Why not go and, and commit the acts of sabotage that, you know, tend to be more effective than me standing here talking to this camera? <laughs>and all that figure into this? The Patriot Act figures into this case in a number of ways. Uh, for one thing, it lowers judicial oversight on certain warrants, and so they were able to gain trap and trace and pin register warrants um, for our phones and our internet connections with essentially no judicial oversight. During the course of the Stop Huntington Animal Cruelty campaign, um, there is also the use of... Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting the name right now. Um, uh, sneak and peek warrants um, <laughs> that were used um, so that they could go into people's homes, trash the place, um, you know, raid the place, and uh, in the end, not have to tell them why their home was trashed until a month later. Um, so that's how Patriot Act is being used. Uh, not exactly against the Muslim extremists that the Bush administration said, but against animal rights activists. Do you think maybe that was the plan all along? Maybe it wasn't about Muslim extremists? Maybe it was about... Yeah, I think maybe it wasn't about Muslim extremists. <laughs> I think it was about uh, 
I think it was about gaining um, ever greater and greater control. I think that um, right now the world is in a pretty sorry state. And in America, we've had the privilege to ignore it for an awfully long time. There's so much wealth here and um, so much affluence that a lot of people have had their heads in the sand. But I think that that's going to come to an end. I think that ecological catastrophe is very real. And I think that we as Americans are going to be again experiencing what the rest of the world has been experiencing for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Um, when that happens, of course the government doesn't want to risk a popular uprising. They don't want to risk that there will already be mechanisms in place for people to make change. They don't want to risk that there will be people already prepared to fight back against um, the crackdown that's sure to come once resources get scarce. And so I'd, I'd certainly say that the Patriot Act, the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act, all the other recent uh, t anti-terrorist legislation we've seen has meant more to control the civilian population of the United States than to attack Muslim extremism. Well, the government first approached me back in 1996. I was sitting on my porch and two FBI agents posing as local police officers came up claiming that they were investigating a noise complaint. Um, during the course of the conversation I had with them, basically telling them to get off my property, they pulled out a list of um, license plate numbers. Um, and it turned out that there was a car parked across the street from my house with a hidden camera that filmed anyone who pulled into my driveway. Um, since that time, I've never relented. I've never stopped doing what I was doing because I feel that the work of, of, of the radical environmental movement and the radical animal liberation movement is absolutely crucial. I, I think that all life on this planet right now depends on our action and so I've never been willing to just sit down and shut up. Um, I've done jail time now, I've been under federal indictment before, I've faced jail sentences before, um, I've been subpoenaed the grand juries, I've um, had one of my best friends paid by the FBI for three years to spy on me, and I've endured it all and I've, I've kept going and I think that that clearly makes some people angry. I think the most positive thing that a person can do if they're sincere about making a change is that they can reject tactical dogmatism. I think one of the things that's made Stop Huntington Animal Cruelty the power that it is, is that we don't deny people the use of, of any tactic. We don't denounce anyone, we don't reject tactics used by anyone. And so on any given night across the country, you can have a Stop Huntington Animal Cruelty member writing a postcard to a corporation. And elsewhere, you might have somebody um, doing um, home picketing and elsewhere, you might have somebody um, planning any number of things, electronic civil disobediences, the use of black faxing. Um, we've also made sure that other elements of the movement, such as the Animal Liberation Front and other anonymous activists who employ illegal means, we've never, we've never denounced them. Um, we've never um, rejected uh, their passion and so I think that that's the number one thing that people have to do. We're getting short on time. This planet desperately needs action no matter what that action is at this point and so we need to free our, ourselves from these chains of dogmatism from pacifism or from the other end of the scale from the glorification of militancy. We need to embrace people no matter what tactic they choose to employ. Um, the second most important thing that I think people can do is to educate themselves about the recent history of government repression in this country. I think people need to understand that the FBI has ran extra legal campaigns to silence activists. I think people need to understand that within the last 30 years, activists in this country have been assassinated for expressing their views. I think that people need to understand that in the 1980s, the FBI illegally tapped more than 5,000 people's phones because they were part of mostly a church-led, a Christian church-led movement known as the Committee in Solidarity with the People of El Salvador. And once we begin to understand this repression, once we begin to understand the tactics that our opponents will use against us, then we can begin to adapt our own tactics. 
and work on meaningful change, work on creating things, um, tactics for our own movements that can bypass this repression.